Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the right back position because there is a lot to talk about when it comes to this position. Barcelona right now only have Jules Koundé. There has been a lot of talks about the central defensive midfield position and like who's going to be our next pivot. We have also talked about who's going to be our next striker. Is Vitor going to be signed? We have, a we have had a lot of talks about that, but now let's talk about the right back position because this is one of Xavi's biggest concerns. And I get it right. I get that Xavi does not feel so, so secure Care about just having Jules Kunde as a right back option. Barcelona do need another player. And so we have talked about and referenced Cancelo. We have talked about and referenced Pavard in the past two or three months. But because of Barcelona finances, they cannot achieve those two signings at all. And then if we look at our current options like Eric Garcia, I just don't see Eric Garcia being incorporated as a right back like ever. We have seen Garcia play as a right center back or as a right back under Ronald Koeman and it, it did not just work out. It's not his natural position. He, is, he simply just does not look comfortable at all and I can't even just don't even get me started about potentially seeing Eric Garcia against Vinicius one day with him being a right back or a right center back it would be disastrous Barcelona will be almost suicidal having Eric Garcia as a right center back or a right back so he's not an option at all now we could also talk about Araujo being an option on the right back position but I just don't see that mainly because Araujo's potential in order for him to be at his very best level is for him to play in the center back position and being right next to Andreas Christensen because man when you have those two players Christensen and Araujo, you have the best center back pairing in the world. Xavi knows this, which is why he's saying, I understand that Araujo can't play as a right back. We have seen him do that many times. I do place him sometimes in that position against Real Madrid, but I want to see him as a center back 99.99% of the time because he can and is going to be the best center back in the world and form the best center back duel in the world. And so now let's talk about the other two options, which is going to be revolving around Serginho Dest and Julian Araujo. I don't know if you guys remember, but, but Barcelona still have those two right backs both of them are coming from north america which is crazy right because when we talk about the, the rivalry between mexico and, and the united states these two countries want to see these two players do well but at the moment there is no future for neither of these two players serginho des just came off on loan from ac milan ac milan do, clearly do not want des at all and with julian we signed this player a couple of months ago and we haven't even seen him play past five to ten, five to ten minutes with the first team we have no data with julian araujo and so what is the current status of serginho Dest. And it says here, according to Mundo, that Barcelona wants to transfer Serginho Dest, but the club might have to accept a loan deal because nobody is willing to pay any price for Serginho Dest at all. And so let me tell you guys something. If for whatever reason, Barcelona cannot sell Dest this summer, then I think that we should just maintain him and work with him. Like literally, if we have no options, then let's keep the player and let's better him. Because if we do get the best level from Serginho Dest, we can increase his market value and then sell him in the the next summer for a better price because we have bought this player for around 25 million euros and if we sell him now and we try to let him go now we're probably going to sell him for around 10 million euros that's going to be a 15 million euro loss for the club so why not just maintain the player if there's no other options right if Barcelona cannot do nothing else work with him make him better increase his market value and sell him for a better price next year and honestly I am a believer that Des can do well because Barcelona is a much better team when, when he comes back he will be surrounded by much better players much better players he'll be around Pedri a lot with Gavi with Alejandro Balde with Lewandowski with Vitor with Dembele on form with Rafinha and hopefully with Ansu Fati on form I can see Dest doing very well if he really does want it but that's going to be the problem right does Dest really want it because mentally I just don't feel like he's really there and I believe that is one of the reasons on why Xavi Hernandez does not want to work with Serginho Dest because mentally when it comes to like his 1v1s when he has to defend it just doesn't look like he gives 110 percent and let me give you guys an example every time Serginho Dest and we're going to be looking at Serginho Dest's performance in the past three years for both Barcelona and, a and AC Milan every time Serginho Dest is in situations like this where the opposition does have his back against Dest and the player is trying to pe protect the ball while Dest is trying to take away the ball from the player Dest is very unsuccessful in situations like that he cannot take the ball away and in situations like that it's very important for our defenders to take the ball away because what happens if we take the ball away from one of the players the opposition is going to be in a bad defensive shape because they are geared up to attack they're not in their defensive shape which is why it's very important for the Barcelona defenders to take away the ball but Des cannot do that he just gives the opposition the possession and I don't know if you can tell but by the way he defends it just he doesn't look like he can like he cares he he gives no intensity no enthusiasm no aggression no nothing and then if you compare that type of situation right to Jules Koundé you put him in the exact same sequence Koundé takes the ball away Koundé 
Kunde comes in with a lot of aggressiveness, a lot of hunger, a lot of determination to take the ball away. And then after they take the ball away, they go on and attack. And it gives Barcelona a much better position to potentially score. Even with the passes, right, we can see that Jules Kunde can pick the players very well and place those passes that does kill the defense of the opposition. While Des, in this sequence here, when he has the ball and he has options around him, he does tend to get very nervous and he passes the ball to the opposition and Barcelona lose the ball. So this is probably one of the reasons on why Xavi does not want him is because the root of this problem coming from Dest is that mentally he's not that great. Like if he had a, a much better mentality and he was hungry and he had more confidence with the ball and in very deep areas, he would make much better decisions. Again, Jules Koundé is just much better and that is the reason why he is a world champion. So the quality difference between these two players like Dest and Jules Koundé is just, it's huge. And I know that Xavi is looking at this and saying, okay, if I count on Serginho Dest and he continues to perform like this, I would not want to drop Kunde and put in Serginho for a very important match if Kunde ever does get injured. The quality is just is too big and our level defensively will drop a lot. We need better reinforcements. We need another Jules Kunde, someone who can provide the exact same intensity when trying to take away the ball. So I have said right in this video that Dest should be given a chance because I think that there is a possibility that he can improve his level. But man, is that going to need a miracle in order for us to see that? And there has to be maximum confidence between Xavi and Serginho Des. Moving on towards Julian Araujo, and it says here, according to Mundo, that Xavi will test Julian Araujo in the preseason, but if he doesn't convince, he will leave on loan to gain experience in Europe. Now, with Julian, we have no data. We have no idea how he would play wearing the Barcelona shirt. I don't know how he feels physically, mentally. We have literally nothing. I did see him recently with Mexico, and he made a massive mistake that led towards Mexico conceding a goal. So I don't know, like uh, some things are lo looking a little too shaky with Julian Araujo. Now the first game in the preseason will be held in about two weeks. Barcelona will be playing against Juventus. That is going to be a time where we're going to need to see Julian Araujo's level to see where he is at and if he is good enough. But man, let me tell you, is he going to need to deliver? And the expectations are going to be so, so high. And I also seen this player in person. I have seen him play for the LA Galaxy a few months ago. It was a pleasure to watch him play. I think that he was exceptional with the LA Galaxy. But you know, like when we talk about the European level and the MLS level is just two completely different things. Whatever you can do in the MLS is going to be very questioned whether you can do that in Europe. So who is the main target right now? Who is Xavi leaning his confidence on? And that is going to be a player that we have talked about, which is Ivan Fresneda. And it says here, according to Javi Miguel, that in Xavi's plan, the arrival of Fresneda would not change the idea of Kunde as a right back. Only the signing of Cancelo would. Fresneda would be a backup, but not a starter. So I can see why Ivan is being chosen by Xavi. We have seen him play as a right center back only twice though last season. And I do assume that Barcelona is going to be playing with a three-man defensive line. Xavi will go with the exact same system. I do assume that Xavi is going to continue to use a four-man midfield. I don't know if that midfield is going to be a diamond or a box. Who knows? He can surprise us. But the main point is that he will continue to go with a three-man defensive line. So it's very important to question whether our next right back can play as a right center back because Jules Kunde can. And he plays that tremendously well. So Ivan Fresneda has played as a right center back two times, once against Atletico Madrid and once against Real Madrid. Now, unfortunately, in those two games, Ivan's team did lose. Against Real Madrid, it was 6-0 and against Atletico Madrid, it was 3-0, right? It was disastrous. And I know that this does lower the confidence for Ivan and for us fans because him conceding six goals and then three goals against, against Atletico Madrid does make us very nervous because he was starting in both of those games as a right center back. But honestly, if you look at those two games, he did show glimpse of brilliance, I would say. He was one of the best players for Valladolid. Lead. But in the end, I still question whether this player can deliver as a right center back when he is needed because he has very little experience playing in that position. Again, he has only played as a right center back with Valladolid twice. And the other games, the other like 36 to 40 games that he played, he was mainly a true right back. So if Barcelona can get Ivan for 15 million euros, since his value did drop because Valladolid were relegated into second division, it would be a great deal. If we can get it for 12 million euros, it would be a great deal. And I think that that should be the end of it because I think that if th the faster we can sign a our we're brand new right back them that that will be a time where we can just finally move on and focus on other positions because i do want to get this conversation out the way sign our backup right back for jules kunde and then move towards maybe strengthening the left wing position or strengthening the right wing position so that is going to be wrapping up today's video thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next